Hello, my name is Martin Sundermeyer and I will present our work Contact GraspNet Efficient Sixtoff Grasp Generation and Cluttered Scenes. Many grasp generation approaches focus on bin picking from a top down view. We look at the problem of manipulation in everyday environments with structured clutter consisting of unknown object, as shown on the right. In such environments, 3D scans are often infeasible, so we are only given a single RGBD image from an arbitrary viewpoint. The goal is to predict a distribution of stable six-stuff grasp proposals for all visible objects in the scene. There are several requirements for such a method. Grasps need to be six-stuff to find all potential grasps and to be invariant to camera and object poses. They also need to be collision-free to not damage the robot or environment, which is challenging under partial observability. Furthermore, we need a dense coverage of grasps to ensure the existence of kinematically feasible grasps. Finally, we should be fast to allow for closed loop grasping. In recent years, we have seen strong progress in learning based grasping from very different perspectives. Some great leaps forward were DEXnet, a grasp ranking method, and the RL method QtOpt. However, both are restricted to top-down grasps. Recently, grasping in the wild has shown how to learn grasp from human demonstrations. But as we have seen, multi-view cannot always be ensured. Sixth of GraspNet introduced full object-centric sixth of grasp predictions. But it is still hard to learn the sixth of grasp distribution directly on scenes. If the main issue is the high dimensionality, how can we reduce it? We could project the grasp approach directions to the visible surface to fix translations and thus reduce dimensionality. This was recently done in a method called S4G. However, approach directions are suboptimal because they are highly ambiguous. In the example below, you can see very similar grasps with quite ambiguous approach directions. Also, you can't project grasp approach directions to thin edges or through loops. So, what determines the stability of grasps? Yeah, contact quality. So, our idea is to root six of grasps in their contacts. The underlying assumption is that most stable grasps have at least one visible contact. We start with the acronym dataset, which contains 17 million sixth of grasps from physics simulation. We map those grasps to contacts in rendered point clouds, as seen to the right. Observed points with no nearby successful grasp contacts are considered unsuitable. Then the problem reduces to learning a contact point classifier, and for each suitable contact, a 3 dof grasp rotation and 1 dof grasp width estimation. Our 4 dof contact grasp representation is depicted below. For each successful contact C, we predict the grasp approach direction A, baseline direction B, and grasp width W. From these, we can reconstruct the 6 dof grasp post and the gripper opening, as shown to the right. For training, we create scenes with the meshes and physics simulated grasps from acronym. Colliding grasps are filtered out. Online, we render random point clouds from these scenes and perform the contact grasp mapping. For every rendered point, we compute the closest mesh contact. If this mesh contact is within a 5 mm radius, we label the rendered point as successful and adopt the grasp pose. An asymmetric point net plus plus with several heads then predict pointwise contact scores and our Fordorf grasp representation. We perform a Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization on the network outputs to predict perpendicular grasp approach directions A and grasp baseline directions B. Instead of directly supervising them, we compute an average distance of gripper points shown in pink and the predicted and closest ground truth pose weighted by the contact scores. Thereby, multiple approach directions lead to a low loss and contact confidence can only increase for good grasp post predictions. The grasp with W is highly imbalanced and therefore bins before applying a weighted cross-entropy loss. 
Finally, all predicted contact scores are supervised by a binary cross-entropy loss. In practice, only the top k errors are backpropagated to again counteract data imbalance. Finally, we simply add up our weighted contact classification, grass pose and grass width losses. Please check the ablations in our paper where we execute predicted grasps in the flex simulator and plot grasp success at different grasp coverage levels. They show the benefits of our loss choices and also the importance of training on a large scale grasp that is said like acronym for generalization. But now to the real experiments. At inference time, contact graspment can generate a dense six stuff grasp distribution from raw point clouds. However, to avoid predicting grasps in the background, it is beneficial to use unknown object segmentation in parallel. It can optionally be used to infer local 3D regions of interest and can be used to uniquely associate grasp contacts to object segments by just filtering the contacts. This way we can generate diverse sixth of grasp for each object while avoiding collisions. The most confident grasps are shown in bold here. For quantitative comparisons, we carefully replicate nine scenes with 51 unknown objects from previous works and compare the grasp performance. On these scenes, we achieve 19.2% grasp success after a maximum of two trials per object. This cuts the failure rate in half compared to recent state-of-the-art methods, which themselves have shown to outperform analytical baselines. Forty-three out of fifty-one objects can be successfully grasped in a single attempt, which is important for practical applications. We recently tested in more densely packed scenes where contact grasp.net also successfully finds grasp for each object. Thanks to our six stuff predictions, grasps can be predicted from arbitrary camera viewpoints. It allowed successfully grasping the red cup from the only possible lateral approach direction. Even for stacked scenes, which have not been part of the training set, Contact GraspNet finds non-colliding grasps and successfully clears the table. We 3D printed adversarial objects from Mala et al. and observed that they could also be picked up without problems. Failure cases include collisions during approach and unstable grasp choices that can arise from segmentation errors or clutter. However, often our approach can also handle imperfect segmentation masks because they are only used to filter seen grasp predictions. Since we still have time, here are some more fast forward grasps of the robot. So in conclusion, our approach allows for generating collision-free, dense, six-stuff grasp distributions in near real time. Thank you for your attention. Our code is available on GitHub and can be easily tested on uh, new data, so please have a look. I also want to really thank my co-authors at NVIDIA that made this work and all the experiments possible.